This is a joint work, uh, and uh, the main author is Roman Trafkin. Uh, and there are a bunch of co authors. Uh, there's Rukovnikov, uh, Sasha Braverman, who is he? Uh, Misha Finkelberg, uh, uh, Gates Gori, and myself. Uh, all right. So, uh, so let me just introduce standard notation. Yeah. Right. So this is not quite determined. Uh, <laughs> no, see, uh, the point is that there are uh, two Bs, two Gs, and so something is missing. Uh, we need uh, some F and some T. Uh, uh, all right, so uh, capital K is the, f uh, the field of Florent uh, series. Uh, o is the ring of integers. In there, so G is always GLN. Uh, OK, and uh, also, so we'll be interested in n-dimensional vector spaces. So I will denote by L0 uh, O to the n inside K to the n. Mm, OK, and so now I remind you that uh, uh, the affine Grassmannian is just G of O, G of K mod G of O. Uh, and uh, G of K orbits uh, on the square uh, are parameterized <laughs> so uh, since this is GLN and not SLN they are parameterized not quite uh, Misha has some name for it signature Signature, but uh, I would prefer. It's on the wild. Yeah, but I would prefer not to, <laughs> to use it because I don't like it. So, so it's a uh, n-tuples like it for partitions. Uh, but the only point is that nu's are not required to be non-negative, so they're just arbitrary integers. Uh, okay, and so yes, and so the orbit, orbit. Uh, or so, yeah, nu corresponds to uh, the G of K orbit of uh, uh, this lattice L naught, and uh, the lattice formed by the the following lattice. So you take uh, uh, O times T to the nu nu one, uh, the first base vector, and then dot dot dot. Uh, all t to the new n, uh, the last one. So this, is, this is an explicit representative. OK, so this is the, the standard thing. So now we do the mirabol uh, mirabolic setting. So uh, according to what mirabolic means, it, uh, we need to add a vector. Uh, all right, so now we look at. Uh, uh, the action of G of K uh, on the triple product, uh, so uh, uh, GR cross GR uh, cross K to the N, and there will be, will be a little circle, meaning that we remove uh, the zero vector. Just one point. Uh, all right, uh, and then uh, the the orbits uh, uh, are parameterized by pairs of uh, these guys. So by pairs lambda mu, 
and explicitly uh, the pair lambda mu uh, goes to the orbit uh, of, again, so there's a pair of lattices. The first one is L0. Uh, the second one is, uh, uh, is uh, similar to this, but uh, corresponding to, uh, to the sum lambda plus mu. So it's O uh, t to the lambda 1 plus mu 1. Uh, E1, oh, uh, Un, and the corresponding vector is V is some uh, T to the lambda I, Ei. So the, the second partition somehow comes from the vector, but except that the vector kind of sits in, in between lambda and uh, in between zero lambda and lambda plus mu. Um, I mean, I will never use this later. The only thing that I will use later, so may I erase this part? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I hope everybody read that. <laughs> okay. So if you didn't put the right time for your test, yeah, then fix it. All right. So the, the, the orbit, essentially, the, the only orbits which are important will be important for me, uh, and which are kind of simple, are the orbits uh, labeled by integers. Uh, which are formed by the following things. So you take pair of pairs of the same uh, equal lattices, and the vector uh, sits in t to, to the m times the same lattice. Uh, yeah. So m is an integer. And now you see that, uh, so m may be either positive or negative, and now you see that. Uh, Somehow, oh, sorry, I, I said no. zero is not allowed, so this is a minus t to the one smaller L and yeah, in this. And now you see that, uh, at least naively, if we think about the closure of this, then of course uh, t to the m plus one minus t to the m plus two is still there. Uh, and again, and so you see that this closure is a count of. Uh, so it consists of O sub m. Uh, then you have to add O sub m uh, plus 1. And then you have to add O sub m plus 2, and so on. So this never stops. And so this uh, mirabolic thing is slightly semi-infinite. So the, it goes to, I mean, the orbit go uh, becomes smaller and smaller and never end. So uh, some semi-infinite version. Unlike the usual Sataki. <coughs> but then, no, not as semi infinite as this uh, periodic flag manifold. So they're just slightly. Uh, OK. So now I have to define a, a mirabolic Sataki category. Now, as usual, uh, it's uh, inconvenient uh, to work with g of k equivariant things on something. g of k is an infinite dimensional group. So it's not uh, one, as usually, one replaces uh, uh, g of k action uh, on, uh, well, in our case, it will be on, on this. So one replaces this to by g of o action, and then one kills one copy of the Grassmannian. So it's a completely equivalent, at least formally. And so one wants to define some sort of derived category of g of o equivalent uh, constructible chiefs on this. Uh, now uh, one has to do it a little bit more carefully because of this uh, uh, slightly infinite dimensional thing. So. Let me do the following. So first of all, uh, every uh, so okay. Let me uh, define this equivariant category uh, of uh, 
so first of all, any ob any concrete object sits on the on some finite. I mean, the closure of a finite union of closures of some orbits. So formally, this means that I'm taking a direct limit for, for m goes to plus infinity uh, of some smaller categories, uh, which set on the Grassmannian uh, times 1 over t of m L0. So whose support is increasing with respect to this uh, vector part uh, by enlarging the lattice. And now uh, to define this, uh, so you do the following. So an object of f uh, uh, in this gadget uh, Uh, so any object by definition has the following form. Uh, so we uh, we take uh, uh, we take some uh, m prime uh, greater than or equal to negative uh, to negative m, and then we have the projection from uh, g r times t to the negative m l naught to uh, g r t to the same thing in the numerator, but mod out by t to the m prime, uh, L naught in the denominator. So then this is a finite dimensional vector space. So let's call this projection uh, p m prime. And then by definition, any object like this just pull, is pulled back of some equivariant object on, on this finite dimensional piece. So, so by definition, m has to have the form uh, p m sub m prime up a star of some f prime, where f prime sits in the usual equivariant derived category of, of this thing here with, fi with comp usual uh, finite support. So this part is perfectly finite dimensional. Now, an important consequence of this is the following observation. So I define the category. Uh, and as a consequence, we can look at the following things. So we, can have, we have an embedding of the usual Grassmannian. We can identify it with uh, the Grassmannian times 0 inside uh, the Grassmannian times k to the n. And then by definition, since every object is pulled back from something where you mod out by something, you see that by definition, e every object f with my category is locally constant, although we put this circle, so we removed 0 in, the, in this k to the n. But actually, by definition, every object is constant in the transverse direction uh, to the 0 section, sufficiently small transverse slice. And in particular, so. Uh, so locally constant, or how uh, uh, constant uh, on along uh, a small slice uh, to the zero section. Where zero section is this. And therefore, it makes perfect sense to restrict it to the zero section. Let's take, take this constant thing, what it is in the section. And so there's a functor. Uh, and then this guy is the usual G of equivariant chief on the Grassmannian, which is the Sataki category. So we have a natural functor, restriction functor from my mirabolic uh, Sataki. Uh, to the usual Sataki, derived Sataki. And this functor is very important, especially for proofs. Uh, OK, so now we want uh, to this metabolic thing to make it a monoidal structure. So to give a monoidal structure. And the monoidal structure uh, is defined as follows. So I will be 
slopey, I will go back to this uh, G of K action on the triple product. And then it's, it's standard how to reduce it uh, again to, by replacing G of K by G of O. Oh, so uh, so uh, in this, uh, so we observe that G of K orbits, uh, well, I don't know, orbits or equivariant uh, sheaves. Ah, sorry. First, let me introduce the metabolic subgroup. For me, by definition, it's the stabilizer uh, of a non-zero vector in Kn. Uh, well, in okay, and then uh, completely formally, G of K equivariant. Uh, sheaves on gr times gr times k to the n circle is the same, absolutely the same thing as p equivariant sheaves on the square of the Grassmannian. And then, uh, so whenever you have a group action on the square of something, you use the usual convolution, and, and that's it up to maybe some normalizations. So uh, monoidal structure <coughs> now in reality one has to rewrite it back in terms of G of O equivariant chief on the Grassmannian times K to the N, but that's what it is. Uh, and also, uh, in addition to the monoidal structure, uh, you can convolve, since you have, if you have something uh, which is p-equivariant, uh, in particular, some, any, everything, anything which is g of o equivariant, g of k equivariant is, is also, uh, of course, p-equivariant, p is smaller. And this, so you can convolve g of k equivariant object with, uh, p, uh, with a p-equivariant object, and you again get a p-equivariant object. And this gives an action of the Sataki category uh, on either side. On e either you can both on the left. So this category D, uh, uh, D uh, G of O uh, of uh, the Grassmannian times K to the N circle has, uh, has a uh, D G of O uh, of the Grassmannian bimodule structure. It's a bimodule category over the monoidal category. I'll just write it, uh, it's a bimodule. Uh, okay, and finally, uh, as usual, we can replace, we can put in addition ro loop rotation, and so we can replace everywhere uh, in what I said, G of O by. Uh, loop rotation, in other words, a copy of C star uh, times uh, the same, the, the previous thing. So OK, so this is a, what the constructible side of the Sataki. So now I go to the Langlands dual side, and the, the theorem will say that the two, two sides are equivalent. So. So Langlands dual side. Uh, so for this, we fix uh, two n-dimensional vector spaces. Uh, so there's no, there are no formal power series or anything you know, on the Langlands dual side. Uh, so, and then we define uh, G to be GL of V and G prime to be GL of V prime, uh, and also home uh, to be home from V to V prime. Just linear maps between vector spaces, so the space is just n by n matrices. Uh, 
Uh, and now morally, uh, I will give a formal definition later, but what we want to do morally, we want to consider uh, uh, well, coherent sheaves. Uh, consider uh, coherent sheaves uh, on the stack home uh, uh, mod g times g prime. Now, uh, the group GLV uh, acts on this home on one side, and the GL, I mean, where acts by its action on home v, on v, and GLV prime also acts on this, on the other side. And so we want to kind of take this quotient. Uh, all right, but formally this means the following. So we introduce, well, coherent sheaves. I, I didn't really, d modules, sorry. Uh, 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 d asymptotic d modules. So when h bar is 0 without ro rotation, it will be coherent sheaves. But this is what we want. OK, so now <laughs> what is this? So first of all, I define this. Algebra d sub h. Now this is the usual uh, polynomial h uh, h bar graded operators on home. So uh, this is well, as a formal al algebra. It's a c of h bar algebra. It's basically the Weyl algebra. Uh, so generated by. Uh, uh, elements w in home and w prime in home dual uh, with the relation that uh, w prime, the commutator, is h bar. <coughs> bar and, but I will put degrees in a kind of weird way. So I declare uh, degrees of elements of home to be 0. Uh, and degrees of uh, w prime, and also degree of h bar to be 2. So this is the grading. So this puts it the grading. And the I declare uh, this, I call it a DG algebra with 0 differential. So, so I think of it as a DG algebra. So. So think of this diff h as a, a d d g algebra with zero differential. Uh, all right, and now the category which I want to consider. Uh, is the following. So the notation will be a uh, diff, uh, sorry, uh, d uh, equivariance with respect to g and g prime and perfect uh, of uh, modules of this algebra. And by definition, this means the following. Uh, so it's the derived category of. Uh, of free uh, finite rank uh, graded uh, g times g star g prime equivariant uh, diff h modules. Uh, with equipped with some differential of degree plus one. So these are DG modules and uh, equivalence and all other things are precisely spelled out here. And perfect means that they are free of finite rank. It's a uh, by definition, it's derived category of. 
and the rest is just there's no complexes or anything. Yeah. It's really a module equivalent literally. So there is an action which we are compatible with the action of the algebra. Like weakly equivariant. There's nothing, I mean, there's one, only one notion of equivariant. <laughs> It is it has the G action differential commutes with the action. It's just just the moment map defined with the action. Weakly. Ah, okay. what is it? Fifth H is just a while algebra like on a single variable, right? Yeah, but it's not the same. It's a while algebra is this many variables. Ah, oh, okay. and squared variables. Oh, right. Square, yeah. Right. Maybe I should mention that home star home from V to V prime star is the same as home from V prime to V. So you can also think of it in this way. Uh, all right. So now uh, I defined a, a functor uh, uh, which sends our Mirabolic cat constructible category to the usual Sataki category. And now I want to explain what happens on the dual side. And so on the dual side, uh, we have the following observation. So we have a functor uh, which corresponds uh, so from this category, uh, uh, perfect uh, g cross g prime of d h four uh, to uh, to Satake, but now again in the dual interpretation, uh, and the function is defined as follows. So inside uh, this home. We have a subset, which I will call isom, which is isomorphisms uh, from V to V prime. So those maps, which are actually isomorphisms between those two uh, dimensions. So this is an open subset, open dense subset inside uh, HOM. So essentially, if I identify v, uh, v and v, star, v prime with Cn, so these are G invertible matrices, and these are all matrices. Uh, OK, so now we, uh, so let me write, uh, yeah, uh, let me, so I remind you that G is uh, GL for, for concreteness, let's say V and not V prime. And then let me write uh, uh, the Lie algebra of this. So this is GL V. And then we can do the following computation. So first of all, this isom is a torsor under G. Actually, by multiplication. It's also a torsor under G prime, but I don't care. Uh, and then we can uh, do the following computation. Uh, so we can look at H differential operators on the torsor. So which is essentially computing differential operators on, the, on a group. Now we know how to compute them. So this is a tensor product, well, a, a semi-direct product of functions uh, times invariant vector fields, which is the enveloping algebra of the Lie algebra. And now it's, uh, again, asymptotic version. So this is u sub h bar of, uh, of g. OK? So now, uh, using this, this, we can spell out uh, an analog of this category where you replace uh, home by isom. Uh, so now let me do this calculation. Uh, so, uh, all right, so, so what? So, first of all, let me ignore uh, GL of V prime. So, I want to consider. Uh, I will be sloppy. I will not consider DG, just do a formal computation, but it's clear it uh, extends to what you want. So what is a GLV equivariant uh, uh, D sub H bar uh, module? So I take differential operators on this isom instead of home. All right, so well, we just, it's a module over that. So it's a, a GLV equivariant module 
over uh, this guy. But if you have a GL equivariant module on this, just the functions cancel out. Uh, so this is the same as just u of h bar uh, g module. And so now if you bring back the group GL, uh, GL of v prime, uh, then you see that so, uh, so then uh, g times g prime equivariant uh, div sub h bar of isom modules. Well, it's the same as uh bar modules, equivalent with respect to g prime. Uh, but now you can, uh, well, g prime, g prime equivariant uh, 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 ug modules. But now you have unravel what does the, this action of g prime in has to do with this Lie algebra. In turn, there's only one candidate. It's the adjoint action. So, so now I can remove this prime and just think of it as uh, the Lie algebra of G. So this is the same as this uh, G comma G modules in uh, this compatible sense. And now this is the same as Harish Chandra bimodules. And then if you look back at the definition, so I consider a DG category involving free modules. So these guys are free with respect to one of the actions. And then by Finkelberg and Bezdrukovnikov, their main result, this is precisely derived Sataki category. So by the derived Sataki. Yeah. G is by the adjunct mm -hmm. but G, this is GLN, right? So yeah. I think but there is an. You can compute. I mean, I mean the, 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 there's one thing you have to note here that in order to sort of cancel out the C of I zone, you have to choose a particular point there, yeah. Yeah. which is which identifies G with G prime. Yeah. Because it identifies G with G prime. And then you yeah. can make this population. Yeah. All right, so, ah, and I have to define now monoidal structure. So, monoidal structure on this. Now, suppose I have uh, V and V prime and also V double prime. A triple of spaces, then I have a composition map home from V uh, to V prime uh, times home from V prime to V double prime uh, to home uh, from uh, V to V double prime uh, composition map. So let me call it uh, M. And in this situation, one can define convolution of D modules. So we have a map. So if I have, uh, I don't know, F, M, uh, a D module, in other words, the mo all this gadget here uh, on home from V to V prime, and then another one, let's say N, from uh, a D module on home from V prime to V double prime. Uh, then I had defined the convolution, um, I don't know in which order, 
uh, which is that you first uh, take their external product uh, and then push forward as a D module uh, to, to via this map M. So this is a D module push forward. And then, in addition to that, uh, you take, uh, so also it is on the nose equivalent with respect to GLV and G double prime, but you want to kill the, inter the middle step, and so you take uh, GLV prime invariance. So this is my, the definition. If you don't take this, you, don't, you get some in too, too large infinite dimensional thing, which you don't want to have. Uh, all right, so and uh, there will be two theorems. So the, the first uh, theorem is that now I, I'm ready to, the categories I defined are equivalent. So, so uh, theorem one, uh, uh, there is a monoidal equivalence. Well, maybe triangulated equivalence. Uh, between the constructible side, which is uh, D, uh, uh, G of G M, semi direct product with G of O, of uh, this Rasmanian uh, times a K circle to the N, uh, equipped with the convolution I defined there and uh, this side. So D uh, uh, G uh, G prime uh, perfect of uh, this diff uh, sub H bar, and you, if you remove uh, G O M equivalence, you have to set H bar equal to zero. You get the same. Uh, uh, I must say that uh, uh, at the beginning we actually worked without a GM equivalence. And, and then if you try to work out what is this uh, convolution, you get a complete, I mean, one can write a formula, but it looks com completely incomprehensible. Uh, so Roman uh, invented that formula. I don't know if he knew about D modules from the f in the first place, but at least uh, I couldn't get any sense of it. Uh, there is a, a nice uh, reformulation of this which is probably better fits in the framework of the conference. So it's a kind of tentative, but it looks very attractive. Uh, so suppose I have two, uh, two D modules. So suppose I have some F1, well, M, uh, sitting on, uh, well, a, a D module. I just now will be sloppy and write D module for this object of this perfect derived category on uh, home VV prime and N in a D module on uh, home uh, V prime, V double prime. Uh, then you can, first of all, uh, we have an action of the intermediate group. Uh, G identified with G L of V prime. So, uh, Lie, well, you have an action of the group and also of its Lie algebra. <laughs> in particular, the Lie algebra, the enveloping algebra of this Lie algebra embeds into uh, differential operators both on here and on, on, on here. On one hand, it acts, I mean, V prime is present on both, in both expressions, so we have an embedding uh, of this into differential operators uh, on either home. Okay, and then you can cook up the following algebra. You can take uh, this diff h bar of, let me just write v and v prime, meaning uh, well, home v v prime uh, tensor. Uh, so tensor, well, let me, over the enveloping algebra uh, with the other diff. Uh, 
And then let's take, uh, ah, sorry, no. I, I said nonsense. Sorry. Then we can, so given m and n, we can take m uh, tensor over u over u h bar of g with n. We can do that. Just this uh, x on both, just in particular. But now we can also take invariance of g l v prime, which is the group corresponding to this. Now this uh, expression. Is a Hamiltonian is a quantum Hamiltonian reduction. So it's uh, so uh, m tensor n over c is a bimodule over this. And so for a bimodule, it makes sense to make Hamiltonian reduction. So I can write it as m tensor n uh, triple slash g. And now uh, it is subjective to uh, yeah. So and then uh, a question is. It's a question and a remark. So question, uh, there is a natural map. So is, I will formulate it as a question, but it contains also, also an observation. Is the natural map. So you can first do this. But in fact, this has, receives, I mean, it maps canonically and I think even surjectively, onto the convolution I defined before, where you take d-module direct image and then take invariance. So in the direct image, you mod out more somehow than g. But the question is, it may be true that, in fact, it's an isomorphism. I don't know. At least on the open set of invertible elements, it is trivially an isomorphism. And then you can put it, I don't know any, uh, why is it good, but at least you can think of it in the following way. It's a kind of, I remind you that it was already mentioned by Hiraku that uh, there's a physics uh, construction, I mean, axiomatics due to Moore and Tachikawa. And th uh, this procedure uh, gives a kind of two categorified version of, of that. At least it fits very well. Uh, namely, uh, for you, the objects of this category are vector spaces, n-dimensional vector spaces. And then you define uh, uh, the category of morphisms between. So morphisms form a category. And morphisms from v to v prime are declared to be my category. Uh, so this uh, d g g prime uh, perfect of this d h bar. And if you look at what uh, the structure of composition uh, written in Murta Chikawa is precisely this. And if, it, if, if this conjecture is true, it would be kind of <laughs> categorified version of sort of. At least it looks similar. I don't know. OK, so now I'm ready to formulate. The first theorem. I thought that was the first theorem. Ah. Ah, yeah, that's right. OK. <laughs> right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's good. Uh, OK, so now uh, there's also a version for abelian categories. By the way, did you say this was supposed to be compatible with the Satake? Uh, yes, yes, it is. And I didn't put a convolution. <laughs> OK, so and now. Uh, uh, in this business, there's a nice uh, version with uh, abelian categories. So I just uh, write these structures. Now, for this, I, I will assume that h bar is 0. I, uh, I'm sure there is a very modification in, in for that case, but uh, 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 OK. So, uh, OK, so this is theorem 2. Uh, and there are several statements. So the first statement is that, in fact, the constructible equivariant derived category that we considered, so there's no loop rota rotation anymore because h bar is 0. Uh, uh, 
is in fact equivalent uh, to the bounded derived category of the corresponding category of perverse shift. Again, one has to do shifts in the correct way to even to define this. Uh, this is one. Different yes, yeah, yeah, I was going to say it. In the usual society, this is not true. Uh, B, the civilian category is completely, uh, I mean, it, its description is uh, very simple. Uh, it's equivalent to the category of modules, so G times G prime equivariant, uh, finite dimensional. Uh, modules uh, over uh, the following series algebra, just you take wedge of home, uh, well, direct sum uh, home star, where the wedge has no grading, just as an algebra. Uh, three. Uh, uh, the object, uh, so I remind you that uh, somehow L naught, well, minus zero uh, is, is, is the, I mean, it's the essentially the closure of uh, a, a, an orbit. I mean, you take uh, the standard lattice and remove uh, the next lattice. This is a, an orbit, but then you have to take the closure, you have to add back another lattice and so on. And so this guy is actually smooth. So the constant shift is a per perverse, it's an IC shift at the same time, because the orbit is smooth. And in particular, it's an ob object of this category, kind of the basic object. And under this equivalence, it just goes to the one-dimensional trivial representation. Uh, of the exterior algebra. Uh, and uh, the last statement is that the fiber functor so this uh, category curves has a fiber functor. Uh, uh, ah, I didn't write, well, there's only one. Uh, and the fiber, so just to vector spaces, uh, uh, and it does the following. You take f, uh, and the first you do, do this restriction to the zero section, which I explained is well defined. And then take the usual fiber function on Sataki. So you take uh, a cohomology of the Grassmannian of i upper star, where i is the zero section inclusion of f. And it's compatible with monoidal. It's a monoidal functor. Uh, well, there are more. So what I can say is that if you, uh, there is an obvious, there is, I mean, there's an obvious way to produce other orbits, which I denote by O sub m, where you simply multiply this one by t to m. And on the other side, it corresponds to taking the same object, but twisting the equivariant structure by a power of the determinant representation. I mean, any reduced perverse shift just goes to uh, corresponding reduced representation of G, G times G prime with trivial action of lambda. OK. Uh, all right, so how much, how many minutes do I have? Uh, Maybe three or? No, no, have more. You have, you have at least 10 minutes. Oh, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now I indicate the strategy of the. I would say. Huh? 13 minutes. No, this is definitely you too much. OK. So anyhow, now I will sketch uh, at least one part step of the proof. And again, I will do it only for h bar equal to 0. So sketch 
No proof. Four. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's uh, more or less now, nowadays is a standard procedure. So first of all, we introduce uh, this uh, regular Sataki sheaf. So we have a Sataki equivalence uh, from rep G. Uh, well, in our case, it's GLN uh, to uh, perverse sheaves on the Grossmannian G of all equivalent. And now we take uh, the regular representation, which is an object, some int object, and send it to some int perverse sheaf. And this call it R. And also, uh, and now, we, okay, so now we look at the following axed algebra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Under the bimodule action. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I didn't say it. Uh, the bimodule action is T exact. The convolution itself is not T exact. Uh, but uh, the bimodule action is. OK. So, and now the algebra which we're interested in is this derived equivariant uh, G of O. Uh, of uh, between this basic object and uh, convolution with this regular object on both sides. Now, by the way, uh, I didn't say it this. Uh, this regular object is an idempotent. Uh, so if you convolve it with itself, at least up to if you correct, make normalizations to put it in some sense IC normalization, then it's an idempotent. So up to some shift. And this uh, gives this object an, a ring structure. Uh, so this property makes this as natural algebra structure, graded algebra structure. And uh, as, as in many other cases, uh, one has to do one crucial computation, which involves geometry. And this is to compute that explicitly. And the rest follows formally. So we want to compute this. Uh, and so to, uh, the computation goes as follows. Uh, we construct explicitly uh, using some so geom very simple geometry between these orbits uh, L0 and uh, I mean one dimension less or one dimension more. Uh, we explicitly construct a, map, a linear map from home plus home star. Uh, maybe uh, to, mo to be more suggestive, uh, I, sh I should write it in this way. Uh, home star. So this maps into x1. So now I will not write sub. It's always like this uh, from this object L0. And here you put a specific component, namely the one which corresponds to the Inside all representations of GLN, there is one distinguished one, namely C to the N itself, and also the dual one. So, and that's what you do. You put the fundamental representation C to the N on this side, and the dual one on that side, or the other way around. So, so into, I don't know how to, I see, uh, I don't know, C to the N, composed with uh, the C L naught. Uh, So this is just uh, some simple, uh, you, you explicitly produce a certain extension. Uh, basically, it, it, it's uh, one orbit is a hyperplane in the other. And so then the constant shifts on the orbit and, and on the hyperplane, there's a canonical X, and this, this is it. 
Uh, okay, and now the claim is uh, that this map extends to uh, an, isomor an algebra isomorphism from the symmetric algebra of this vector space to the x <coughs> we want, to the whole x. In particular, the x algebra is commutative, which is not a, a priori obvious. Uh, so the map does extend, and if it's commutative, it extends, and moreover, it's an isomorphism. And this comes with the following, this is the main trick. Uh, now, if you uh, localize uh, uh, the, uh, well, on this side, what you can do, you can restrict this home by isomorphisms, as I explained. But if you reduce this home by isomorphisms, essentially, you, you go back to the usual Sataki. This was this calculation with differential operators. Now, on this side, uh, you you, I defined you this functor restriction to the zero section. And again, we get, end up with the constructible side of Sataki, and we already know their equivalent. So if you kind of localized to the in invertible matrices, then you get an isomorphism, which means that uh, if you localized each of their algebras, there is a map, and moreover, it's an isomorphism. Now, this is not good enough because uh, the singular matrices have, is a divisor. So if you have a map uh, and it's an isomorphism over an open set, uh, it does not guarantee that the map itself is an isomorphism. But now there is a trick. There's a Fourier transform. Namely, uh, uh, the vector space k to the n is a vector space. And so uh, all the picture can be, there's a Fourier transform which along the vector space. And in, that means that you can now look, uh, I mean, this is, so this is home from v to v prime, but this is home from v prime to v. And you can now localize, don't localize this part, but localize that part. And then again, since everything is completely symmetric, you can, uh, V and V prime can be swapped. Uh, you can another localization, and again, you know that it's uh, equivalence by Sataki. But now, if you co take the complement of both, it has co-dimension two. And therefore, it's automatically an isomorphism. Okay, and the final step is that, uh, Formality uh, that, in fact, the DG algebra R home. So if you put, uh, instead of x, you put R home. It's in fact, uh, this DG algebra is quasi, it's formal, uh, and it's isomor well, isomorphic to, to this. And uh, that's it, basically. So I mean, there's an obvious functor. Um, this object is a pr progenerator, and so that, that's it. So our home. <coughs> oh, to X. Oh, now I don't know how to. So it's form. Ah, and so yes, I have at least uh, a few minutes. I don't have enough for, but uh, in fact, you have three minutes. Okay, now that's definitely enough. In fact, uh, this story. So yeah, so there, this is a part, the first part of a. Your talk. Uh, uh, no, not a, definitely not of my talk, but of some of the other co-authors of this part. Uh, uh, so, but uh, uh, there are two other cases. There is one funny case, uh, namely you can look uh, at the following situation. You can look at uh, G L N minus one uh, of O equivariant, again derived or not derived, equivariant category, constructible category uh, on uh, the Grossmannian for GLN, GR, 
of G on S. Uh, equivalent, I don't know. Okay, well, let me. Okay, so uh, what do I have to do? Uh, uh, D, uh, G, L, N minus 1 of O of girls. Okay. And then it turns out that everything I said uh, with a even much more simple, in a simple situation applies to this. Namely, again, this is isomorphic to perf, uh, uh, to perf, uh, I mean, whatever I said, except that there were two groups, GLV and GLV prime, V prime has to be taken n minus one dimensional. Uh, so, uh, Uh, and so this is deduced from that by some reduction. And uh, in the future, it turns out that the interesting thing happens that if you, in terms of D modules, you allow determinant bundle on the Grassmannian. So kind of this version. And then miraculously, it turns out that this business, uh, so yeah, so in what I said, uh, a, a, a suggestive, uh, the correct way to think about it is to look at it as a super algebra. G L N N, namely home. The e even part is G L V cross G L V prime, and the odd part is home from V to V prime and from V prime to V. So this is and exactly that's what we have here. And then it turns out uh, if that if you take the determinant bundle into account, then it really corresponds to some category of representations of this Lie super algebra. Affine. Affine, yeah. Mm. F. Hmm? Where is the affine part in the It's got the loose no. category. It's got the loose category. So. so in any case, it's not part of my talk, so I'm allowed not to talk about it. All right, thank you. <laughs>